Thanks for dropping in. Last week, I showed you how to solve this 3D printed Barrel Cooper's puzzle box. In this week's video, I'll show you how to print and assemble your own copy. First though, let's go over all the parts involved. We have the main screw, the top shell, middle shell, bottom shell, a lock ring, two large hoops, two small hoops, a solution plaque, a cork, one with a hole and one with a latch, I'll get more into that later, a top lid, a bottom lid, display parts, and these two interlocking pieces. This assembly shows all the required hardware for this project. There's an M3 bolt that's 70 millimeters long. In this case, I have a smooth shank that's only threaded at the end, but a fully threaded shank would be perfectly fine. I have an M3 nut. I have a lock nut here, which would be better for keeping everything nice and tight, but a regular M3 nut would work. An M3 washer and a spring that's 15 millimeters in length and five millimeters in diameter. I also recommend three M3 bolts that are eight millimeters long. This is to attach the lock ring, which you could just glue on, but the bolts will hold it more securely. So this is not required, but recommended. Another optional part that's recommended are four O-rings, each with a 12 millimeter outer diameter and an eight millimeter inner diameter. If you can't get these, you could use a rubber band as I'll show later, but the O-rings are sized perfectly to fit these parts. These are the final optional parts. A six millimeter by three millimeter cylinder magnet and a steel dowel pin that's six millimeters in diameter and 14 millimeters long. You could just take a steel bolt and cut it down to shape. However, since I plan on printing and assembling hundreds of these puzzles, I went ahead and purchased a whole bunch of metal dowel pins just so I wouldn't have to cut all those. If you do not use these pieces, the puzzle will have one less solution step, as I'll demonstrate later. The only tools you need will be an Allen wrench, sized for the bolts I mentioned earlier, and some sort of pliers to hold the lock nuts in place when you are tightening the bolts down. First, let's assemble the display stand. I'm just going to take this front piece here and one of these side pieces and slide it into the slot here. This slides until it meets this little bump on the side so it can't slide any further. Take another side piece, slide it in just the same way, and cap it off. And now that's assembled. In the files I've uploaded to Thingiverse, these stands have a little hole in the side that you can stick a raw piece of filament in to really lock these pieces into place so they don't come off easily. For the assembly instructions, I'm going to assume that you're going to use this optional magnet piece. If you're not, just ignore this uh, next couple steps. We're going to take a little bit of hot glue, or any glue really would work, but this doesn't need to be held that strongly, so hot glue is fine. We're going to take this magnet and push it into that hole. It doesn't have to be flush or anything, it just needs to be roughly stuck there. Now this metal dowel will fit onto the other end here in this little slot. Just slides right in and gets caught by the magnet. This is an excellent time to check to make sure that this is holding uh, strongly enough and not too strongly. If you try to use um, some stainless steel, um, it may or may not be magnetic depending on the alloy being used. So uh, make sure that it is in fact holding and that a gentle little slap on the bottom of the piece releases the dowel rod. If it's holding too strongly, add more glue on the top to make this magnet a little bit, uh, raised a little bit higher. We're going to take the lock ring and slide it into this middle piece like so. It can be kind of a tight fit, so it might take a little bit of wiggling around before you get it inside. But once it's there, you can just push it against the top of this middle shell piece. Now we're going to take this top shell piece, that's the one with these two holes here. As you can see, it has three smaller holes on the bottom. We're going to line those up with the three bolts. 
Now just take an Allen wrench and tighten these all the way down from the opposite side. If tightened correctly, there'll be very little separation between these parts and they'll be able to rotate very freely. The bolts also should not interfere with any of the raised parts in this center shell. Since I have the glue gun warmed up, I'm going to attach these two smaller hoop pieces by gluing them directly onto the shell. They don't have to be glued, but if someone's pulling on the puzzle, these pieces can come off, so a little extra glue helps keep them in place. As you can see, I didn't really put a ton of glue, just enough to keep it kind of gummy. And let's do that with the other end. Okay, and that's all the glue we need for this project. The next step involves assembling these two interlocking pieces with this hardware assembly. But before I do that, I want to demonstrate what it looks like when it's completely assembled and explain how it works and why it works. In this completed assembly, you see that the bolt is holding on to the spring, which is compressing the washer and shoving this portion of this interlocking piece into the opposite interlocking piece. When they rotate freely, they eventually lock into place and they must be pulled apart before they can rotate again. That's what keeps this bottom piece attached, but allows it to be pulled slightly, rotated, and then snapped back into a new place. Even though these two interlocking pieces are not identical, it doesn't matter which one goes into the top and which one goes into the bottom. Just select one, find the octagonal hole in the shell top, and slide this in it should be pretty tight, so this little cutout here meshes with the little peg that's printed into the shell piece. Now do the same thing with the bottom shell. As you can see, it also has a little peg that fits the cutout. We're just going to take this bottom shell and place the interlocking piece into the hole in this middle shell. If everything's been assembled correctly so far, and these interlocking pieces are pushed flat on the floor of both of those pieces, they will interlock. Now we need to take this hardware assembly to keep those pressed together. Again, the order for this assembly is bolt, spring, washer. If the head of your bolt is too small to keep the spring secured, then you may want to add another washer to the top of this assembly. And I prefer to put the head of the bolt in the top of the barrel. That way, if someone were to try to uh, disassemble the whole thing, they have to take the top lid off first, meaning they have to solve the puzzle. Then compress the spring so it comes out of the bottom there. And just take the lock nut and tighten it onto the bolt. This is where we're going to need to use pliers and the Allen wrench to get everything nice and tight. Just hold on to the lock nut with the pliers on one side, and on the other, tighten with the Allen wrench. You want this to be tight enough that there's a lot of pressure holding everything together, but loose enough that you can still separate and rotate. This still feels a little bit loose, so what I'm going to do is rotate it so the two interlocking pieces are stuck in this position where they're not actually fully tightened. And then with these pieces in this position, I'm going to keep on tightening this bolt um, until it, it feels a little too tight. And that should give it a nice good spring. Okay, that's a very good snap. 
and that feels about right. Let's attach these extra hoops. Now, like with the smaller hoops, you could glue them down, but I intentionally leave them unglued so that way they spin freely. They don't quite come off as easily as the smaller ones do. So just take the hoop, and as you can see, there's a little bump on one end of the inner hoop. That bump should be pointing to the outside of the barrel. So, in this case, the bump is to the right. Snapped on. And in this case, the bump is going to be to the left. That one took a little more effort to snap on. Um, in theory, these are symmetrical, but uh, there could be some printing artifacts to make it tighter sometimes than other times. The key thing is that these rings are, these hoops are now on the puzzle. And if they come off, it doesn't really affect the solution at all. Essentially, the puzzle is now assembled. We have a lot of loose pieces left, but those are all parts that come off during the solution to the puzzle. So from here on out, everything we do is part of the regular solution to the puzzle, but in reverse. So the first thing we need to do is restore this screw piece to its proper place. And if you've seen the solution video, you know that the way to indicate uh, the right positioning of everything is to look at these bottom indicator lines on the puzzle. We want the centerpiece rotated so the cork hole lines up with threes, uh, these three lines on the top of the puzzle. And we want the bottom of the puzzle lifted up and rotated 180 degrees. So we have three indicator lines, a cork, and no three indicator lines. At this point, we have a direct shoot from the bottom of the puzzle to the top of the puzzle. We're going to take the screw and we're going to use this side here with the little notches cut out. We're going to shove it through that hole, twist a little bit, and use the cork as a plunger to push it out of the other side. And from here we can untwist it more. And now that the screw piece is coming out of the other side, the center piece can once again rotate and it can line up its indicators as can this bottom piece. Now the screw, which can be screwed in either while it's fully extended out or screwed in when it's slightly pushed in, we want to screw it in when it's slightly pushed in like that. Now it's just a matter of taking the solution plaque, adding it to the top of the puzzle, and we're going to attach these two lids, but as I'm going to demonstrate, just simply putting the lids on the puzzle isn't very foolproof. That's because someone can take the puzzle and give it a sharp slap to knock those lids off. That's why both of the lids have these little ridges. You can wrap a rubber band, or in my case, I'm going to use these O-rings to add a little more grip to these pieces. That way, a slap like that won't be enough to knock them out of place. If you're going to use a rubber band, you'll probably need to experiment with different sizes, different numbers of loops, different lengths, um, until you get something that, that feels right but essentially these lids should uh, press fit in fairly easily, but there be, should be kind of a gummy feel is the best way I could describe it. They aren't going to come out easily at all. See, it's stuck there. Let's do the same for the top lid. If you're gonna use O-rings, um, there's no real rule on which notches you place them on. I just place them on the first notch and the last notch. And we're going to slide this into that lower hole. And again, press that on. The lid should press, uh, should press down far enough 
that you can't take a finger and just pry the lid off. It should match up very well with this inner mechanism to prevent that. Now we just need to add the cork in. If you used a magnet latch like I demonstrated, you want to use the cork with the hole that runs through it. If you're not using the magnet mechanism, use this cork with this little springy latch. The springy latch is just enough force that when you insert it into the hole, it will slightly clip into place and not fall out easily just by tipping the puzzle over. It's not held very strongly. You just pull it right out like that. So there's not any sort of special solution to removing it, but it at least keeps everything in place and tidy. And there you go. The puzzle is complete and ready to be solved. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the design process for this puzzle and some of the issues I ran into when beta testing it. Until then, all the files for this project are posted for free on Thingiverse, and I hope you give that a look. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.